So hello again. It's such a beautiful fall, autumn day, sunshine, and it's time to do some uh, research and uh, try to check the status of my hybrid Prius, Toyota Prius 3 battery. Because uh, in the last time I have some some errors coming from the batteries, and now I'm trying to develop a system a way to check all the cells and uh, eventually to replace the the used one or the bad ones yes you may see it's very simple because I'm not uh, I'm not taking the battery out yet I'm only checking the the cells absolutely you have to take the main fuse out it's that uh, if you remember it's this orange one and also be sure that the 12 volt battery it's also out well for this purpose I'm using a B6 V2 balance charger now I'm doing a cycle of five discharging and charging to the cell number one you know this one it's always cell number one but they are always in two so one a and one B let's say or one and two that means cell number one and this is element one element two three and so on until 28 and finally we're gonna have 14 cells 14 cells each of them with two elements one of this element have seven point something volts so finally we should have around 14 uh, to 16 volts for for a good one but we talk about this later for now as you may see the the charger is discharging with 1.3 amps and that's and that slow on uh, takes a lot of time so that's why I'm gonna have a mood and I'm gonna have a better discharge current later is doing a charge with 5 amps 5 amps is more than enough you see then I'll put all the results here and later transfer them to an, uh, an Excel uh, worksheet okay, that's the element number one I'm testing now from the first cell let's say so far it's looking like a really good one and uh, I have uh, like 2 amps in 86 minutes it's gonna take a long time that's the bad thing about but it but the mode I told you about before it will change the discharge current to 5 amps and that's uh, much much better and much quicker in the same time if it is a good element that should last for another uh, three hours or something until the uh, till the discharge it's done and I still have five cycles to do that and finally I'm gonna have some results in the upper corner you see it's 7.2 volts now and uh, in the middle up middle it's uh, the discharge current and the middle down it's the time until the discharge starts in the right down corner it's how many milliamps uh, already have been discharged so uh, it's like almost 2000 in 88 90 minutes or something so it's a pretty good uh, it's a pretty good element uh. okay so like I said I'm trying to check my uh, hybrid uh, battery so the battery have uh, 28 elements like this and each element have six cells it's a 6s pack so if you're trying to charge and discharge uh, to find out the right capacity of each element with uh, with an IMAX 6 or even with this one B6 V2 it takes a lot of time and that makes everybody crazy you know because it takes like maybe one day for each uh, element and uh, you can imagine 
you need at least 28 days to check this because the discharge rate is very low uh, even even with this one which is capable of, uh, of 2 amps uh, per hour it's not working well because if I observe that if I have a voltage more than 4 volts or something or like let's say a single uh, lithium cell uh, 3.7 or 4 volts or something then uh, it goes under 2 amps and sometimes even 1 amp ok so now it's charging as you see and I was trying to to develop something to have a uh, a better load on this charge so a kind of uh, ballast a kind of extra dump and I found it very easy to do with a couple of transistors you'll have the schematic uh, at the end of uh, this and I found something interesting on the web uh, from from somebody right here and uh, his name D. Well uh, and I'll let you know the address for uh, for later details and of course all the credits goes to this guy thank you very much you helped me a lot with this idea and uh, what's happening here so we have uh, a couple of transistors as you may see, only two transistor. It's a classic Darlington uh, circuit. This one is taking 12 volts on ground from uh, from the IMAX, and it's taking bias voltage from here, and that's one of the MOSFETs uh, involved in this charging process. So when it's starting to discharge, then the relay is getting on and this bulb here will be an extra ballast. Of course it can be just the bulb there, but I preferred also to have a power meter and uh, a current meter too and then I can have a better control of everything what's happened there okay so this is a very simple uh, schematic and it's working amazing nice and now let's say uh, a couple of words about this uh, B6 V2 it's, mm, it's made f uh, by Hush TRC. Uh, it's looking like a, almost like an IMAX uh, B6 with a few better improvements, uh, better MOSFETs, um, stuff like this, and also some extra functions. Uh, now, for my purpose, I'm doing this kind of user settings. I let the key beep on, low volume, uh, I let the cycle waste time to 5 minutes, that means between a charge and a discharge cycle it have enough time to cool down and rest. Ok, this is really important too, uh, the cutoff capacity is set to 5500 milliamps. 7.5 amps uh, because I don't want these elements to to gain more to gain more than it should. In fact, these are rated to 6.5, so um, I don't want to destroy it with an extra charging. So this should be set to 7.5. Uh, then something else. Okay, here we go again. Beep, beep, beep. Okay, 7.5. Save the timer, it's off because uh, 
I'm not sure how long it takes for now with the extra dump uh, to have a five times cycle on each element. Maybe I use it later, but for now it's off. The charge power is maximum 80 watts, and that's it. Everything is set. And now let's go back to uh, nickel hybrid metal elements. Okay, and here also we have some uh, settings. I put a maximum charge of 6 amps, a discharge with 1 amp. And now let's try to cycle uh, the battery. Now I just did it uh, one time. I just set it to one, but then you can set it to five, maximum five. And um, I always want to start with discharge and then charge because at the end of the cycles, the battery or the element will be charged again to a proper voltage. Okay, so let's go back to one and let's have a test. Okay, so now it started charging as you see the load is on, the relay was clicking and here we have the extra power meter, 3.15 amps and with one here we should have 4.15 amps of current and we can check that very easy with a clamp meter right here on the battery 4.3 amps and it's almost correctly 3.12 with another 1 amp here that's 4.3 and that's, that should be okay uh, let's, let me see if I measure the other way because it's a little bit of difference 3.6 3.3 and 3.32 oh that's fine so it's pretty accurate now I can lay on a, on a, on 4 amps 4.1 4.2 amps of discharging that means the the whole cycle it's getting faster at least four times um, to discharge a good element like this with one amp it takes at least six hours so now it will be done in uh, one hour and thirty or something so uh, the things are getting much more faster and a meter like this it's also good because we then have a a power meter you see the energy down here so I can even uh, do some some math to see uh, clearly how many amps have been used uh, in this process in in the discharging process and uh, also the whole cycles because this meter even if it's turned off it still remember the last uh, counting the last measure okay, I may say okay so I'm gonna put all the things together for now and uh, I'll be back later with uh, some more details. Let's talk about the schematic. It's a very simple Darlington uh, schematic. Uh, the bias is coming to T1 by a 22 kilo resistor. The bias, like I said, is coming from the gate, uh, one of the MOSFETs involved in the discharging process. And then from uh, IMX, from the output of the IMX, you have the load through a relay the load it can be connected by a power meter like I did but it's not really necessary here we have all the connections to IMAX as you may see we have a bias uh, wire connected to one of the MOSFETs gate then we have a plus 
up there on the left and the ground up there on the left too. The bias is the blue wire connected to one of the gate of the MOSFETs almost near the plus. A uh, few more photos. The connector I used and the uh, way I put all the things on a board. The relay and the transistors up there. And that's it for now. Thank you. I'll be back with more details in part two.